Hi guys, this is James from DBG and welcome to another video. Um, this time it is um, not going to be a review of Empires and Flames. Um, this book has been out for a while, so I will not be reviewing it. There was plenty of um, review videos out in internet land for you to enjoy. This is going to be more of a chat video um, because I am really, really interested in what happened in the Pacific and Far East. Um, Obviously, everyone knows about Pearl Harbor. Uh, the 7th of December 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and did an awful lot of damage to the US Pacific Fleet. But they didn't complete the job, which enabled the US Pacific Fleet to strike back at the Battle of Coral Sea, which was technically a victory for Japan, but they had to pull back. And then the Battle of Midway, which totally changed the dynamics of the war in the Pacific. But what I'm more interested in is, is the areas that aren't covered. Everyone knows about. Yes, I'm really, really interested in um, what happened outside of the island hopping campaign or the Pacific battles, such as um, New Guinea. The Australians um, struggle against the Japanese um, throughout the Pacific War. In New Guinea, um, also China. Obviously, China was invaded first in the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1931, and then again in 1937, which led to horrific atrocities, including the Rape of Nanking, where 200,000 Chinese um, citizens were killed, and unspeakable atrocities were done to the people of that city, which was then the capital of China, um, and also in Burma. Um, everyone knows more probably about um, Malaya and Singapore and Hong Kong and how they were, how the British and Commonwealth forces were uh, defeated. Um, not quickly, because um, Malaya took some time. Um, it took a couple of months to properly um, subdue Malaya and Singapore. But anyway, what I'm more interested in is Burma and the forgotten armies that fought in Burma, um, namely the um, 14th Army, uh, commanded by Bill Slim, who is loved by all. Um, the Chindits, uh, Aldwin Gate's Chindits. Um, Aldwin Gate is a Marmite character in the Second World War. Either you love him or you hate him. And then um, some of the books I read, um, he had a mixed reputation with his troops. He was loved or loathed. And some people even thought he was a bit um, incompetent. But that's by the by. Um, and also there are the famous battles of Kohima and Infel when the uh, Japanese invaded India which not a lot of people actually know that the Japanese invaded India so that's what I'm interested in that's what I want to do so um, I have a plan of my bolt action armies um, you've seen a lot of them there's um, still one more episode of that to come out um, and I'll split everything down into periods of the war so my British and Italians are the early part of the war, so that's 1939 to 1941. My um, Germans and Soviets are the late part of the war, which is 1944-45. So I need something for the middle part of the war, hence 42-43. Uh, um, I thought Burma would be perfect for that. Um, so I'm planning on doing a standard British uh, reinforced platoon um, using War of Games Chindit models but um, using the head swap a figurehead system they've got and using Gurkha heads in there to represent um, standard British troops because if you look at the Gurkha heads supplied by War of Games they don't look very Nepalese they look more European so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to add obviously a few odds and sods to it um, Thick as machine guns, three inch mortars. Um, I'm not deciding on the gun yet. Um, I'm erring towards a six pounder because I've already got a 25 pounder for the British in the desert. So I don't really want to repeat another model. Um, and as for the tank, uh, the period I'm counting on, the British tanks in the area were, they only had two tanks in the area until they got reinforced later on with uh, Grants and Shermans. 
they had uh, Stuart, uh, the Stuart Three, which was the Seventh Armored Brigade, which was transferred straight from the desert, straight into Burma, when um, the Japanese invaded Burma. And it was thanks to the Seventh Armored Brigade that most of the British troops, or British and Commonwealth troops, who um, retreated through Burma, got through because the Seventh Armored Brigade fought valiantly. And because they were veteran troops, they fought across the desert, so they knew what they were doing. Um, and their um, regimental symbol is still the Jaboa, uh, but instead of being um, red and white, it's green and white. So that would be interesting to do. Something I'm doing some stewards. Um, and as for the Japanese, um, the easiest way to do the Japanese is the starter army from Warlord Games, which I'm planning on doing. And then I'm going to add to that um, a gun, because it doesn't have a gun. It has mortars, it has machine guns, it has plenty of infantry, it has a tank, which is the Chiha. But it doesn't have a gun. Um, so I'm just going to add a medium howitzer to that. And those are going to be my mid-war forces to represent the fighting that was going on in Burma. I also have a penchant for doing Chinese. There are a couple of companies who do Chinese. One is um, these Brigade Games, which are an American company who do the Chinese that were trained by the Germans. If you didn't know, um, China signed a pact with Germany in the mid-30s and they supplied and trained their army. So a lot of the Chinese had um, German helmets, German equipment, German guns. They had German armoured cars and German Panzer I tanks. This is uh, the 30s, that's all the Germans had. Um, also, Merrill's Marauders which were a group of volunteers, 100% volunteers. They um, fought through the civic campaign in either the Marines or the Army. Um, some of the most horrific fighting, including Guadalcanal, um, Tarawa, um, places like that. And they volunteered to join a uh, was Marauders. Um, I can't remember their official regimental title. Um, but they fought um, in northern Burma with the... Um, with the Chinese under General Vinegar Joe Stilwell. Uh, Vinegar Joe um, is not well liked by us Brits because of what he did to the Chindits. And also he tried to claim some of the Chindits' successes as American successes. And there's a um, Major Michael Clevert, who is uh, known as Mad Mike, who sent a rather salty signal to Vinegar Joe when he um, announced that his troops had cut the railway line near Michina, basically saying, um, shut up mate, we did it, uh, to which um, Vinegar Joe actually um, gave Mad Mike his dues and said, okay, yeah, you did it, well done. Um, I forgot where it was now. Oh yes, and Vinegar Joe also ordered the Chindits into a full-on frontal assault to the important um, town of Mijana. And the Chindits had just come out from a three-month operation in, in, the, in the jungle. The majority of them were riddled with disease. They were exhausted. Um, I don't even know about the Chindits. They, at the end of the Chindits expedition, um, expeditions, only about 10% of the troops who went on these expeditions were able to fight again. The rest were um, either invalided home because of the malaria or the typhus or the cholera, or just pure exhaustion. Fighting in that sort of terrain um, behind enemy lines is not only stressful, um, yeah, it's exhausting. I remember the Japanese were exceptional jungle fighters, but the Chindits helped um, dispel the myth about the uh, Japanese invincibility. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm planning to do for the mid-war part of my bolt action armies. Um, I think I'll be a long way off because of, uh, as you saw in my other previous videos, uh, financial constraints and time because um, I'm booked with commissions until September, probably October or later. So there you go. That's just a little bit of a chat what I'm planning to do with the rest of my bolt action forces. Um, I will say now, totally changing the subject, and if you're still with me, thank you so much, that uh, Devil's Brush Gaming is actually sponsoring a 40k tournament in Ashford, Kent. Um, it's called the Mini 40k Tournament. Um, it's 1,250 points. Uh, both Chris and myself are playing. Chris is using uh, Space Marines, and I'm using my Death Watch. 
Um, there will be videos on my Death Watch army coming up and um, there will be videos on Chris's army because I am painting Chris's army. So um, yeah, so also um, go to Facebook and it's um, Mini 40k Tournament, uh, look it up. And if you're in the Kent area, um, chuck the guy a message and see if there's any spaces left. I don't think there is, there might be some. But chuck, chuck him a, um, uh, the organizer an email and see if there's any spaces left. I know there's a reserve list for people who drop out, so he might add you to that. Anyway, as usual guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And I'll catch you next time.